Is it over? Is rapid gate finally over? Both good questions. However, unfortunately, I don't think the answer that Nissan is giving us is really the right answer. I feel like it's actually shifting the problem from one corner to another. I'll tell you what they are saying, what they're doing about it, but it kind of raises more questions about why it wasn't fixed earlier. Uh, now, if you're wondering what rapid gate is, I will explain it as well. That problem means you have a life. Good for you. So all of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and let me give a quick shout out to one of my newer Patreons, Adam Herman. Welcome. Um, thank you for supporting my show and thank you for the rest of my Patreon community for supporting me, the independent uh, uh, YouTuber who does this full time now. Uh, and of course, uh, you guys have an option to watch this live every day. So. Thank you so much. All right, let's talk about RapidGate. What is RapidGate? Okay, so as you know, Nissan Leaf, um, the first generation had its you know problems with the battery, um, having it just go bad, or you know uh, the the life of the battery, longevity of the battery would would go down pretty quickly. It was already kind of had a short range of under 100 uh, realistic miles, uh, but then came the second generation of uh, Leaf. Now outside it looked much better right it, it pretty pretty cute car i liked it but the battery inside even though a, a bigger range at 151 miles it still didn't have the active cooling system which kind of requires to keep the batteries uh, uh, cool especially when the car is charging or performing at the higher um, energy output um, since they didn't have it that believed to be one of the issues now once uh, they started selling the 2018 models with a newer shell, um, they uh, realized, well, people realized that, um, you know, when you fast charge that car and you can charge it up to 50 kilowatts at, at a 50 kilowatt rate, um, if you do it more than once a day, the second and third and fourth time, which a lot of times is required when you're on a long trip, um, basically the car takes much longer to charge and that was called the rapid gate because the car was no longer rapidly charging and uh, that the whole hell broke loose. This has been an issue. Now, Nissan didn't really address it right away. Um, they kind of said they're looking into it and it's really been almost a year since they, uh, since they you know, tried to do something about it. And finally, they're saying that they have. And the answer is a software update. Now, okay, good. But now that I'm kind of realizing what the software update is, they basically said that uh, the, the problem was that uh, the, 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 the limit on the charging, the fast charging for the second and third time, wasn't really a hardware issue. It was because the software that they had had a very conservative estimation of how you know, hot the batteries get, and it was basically slowing down the second and third and fourth attempts. Um, and now they basically kind of removed it, or, or I don't think they removed it, they kind of uh, extended it, uh, loosened it up. Now, they did this from what I understand for the models that were produced from or sold, produce, I'm going to assume that it's produced uh, from December 8th of 2017 to May 9th of 2018. Now, that only raises more questions. And, you know, let me tell you what they are, but I'm still really not done understanding how the fix is the fix and that, isn't that creating a, a bigger problem. Before I uh, go any further, let me remind you that this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla. There's a discount code in the description of this video. This way you can save yourselves a few bucks. All right, so um, the, 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 the problem, the two problems I'm having with, with, with this is this. Um, if you ha if you know that your batteries are still not actively cooled, even in 2019 models, now that they actually say that they upgraded their battery, now that there's an uh, extended range version with 226 miles, even after all this, they still don't have an active cooling system. Well, isn't that problem with the degradation of the battery, longevity of the battery is going to come back to hunt you guys because now you don't have that limitation on what essentially was preventing your battery from overheating. So that's why I'm saying that I think they're just pushing this one problem into a different corner. Why did it take a year to do this? That, I mean, if they knew this all along, that the, the problem was caused by the software uh, limitation and all they really, and they were comfortable removing it, even though the question what, that the one that they just asked really is gonna be in everyone's mind. 
Why wait for entire year? And on top of that, what happened after May 9th of 2018? Were the cars uh, being produced and rolled out there in, in the showrooms? Did they have that uh, limit already loosened up? And so if you kind of knew about that fix, uh, why didn't you tell us? I really just don't understand what they're doing with this. And of course, just like I mentioned, the cooling is not going to be happening 2019 models. And then we also don't know what's going to be happening with, with the cars being rapidly charged over and over again, especially if the car is on the uh, long road trip or if the weather is pretty hot, you know? Now, by the way, while all of this is going on, just so you know, Nissan Leaf was just crowned the most sold electric car in Europe, which is true. Uh, we're talking about 2018, right? So despite all of this going on, people in Europe said, we like this, we like what we see. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, over 40,000 sold in Europe. And just to compare them to Tesla, Tesla obviously wasn't selling Model 3s in Europe, just Model S and Model X. And uh, they sold a little under 30,000 in Europe last year. Now, obviously that is going to be crushed by the Model 3 this year as they've been doing it. But nevertheless, 2018, was all about this car with all the problems that they had with the lack of thermal management system with the rapid gain and all of that stuff you know now by the way let's do a quick poll i'm kind of interested to know is active thermal management system is a must for you to buy your next car whether it's an Nissan leaf or not so um put in a comment section you know active cooling is a must or i can live without active cooling and then we'll see. We'll conduct kind of a un, very non-scientific poll here. And I'm curious to know, I know 40,000 people who might disagree if you think that, but nevertheless, let's conduct that test. All right, I will keep you guys updated on what's going on with this or if any some issues, any other uh, statements other than that. See you next time. And remember to stay charged.